We have to deal with that god-awful tax cut the president to put you By the way, you all did really well on that, right? You all really saw things go. Look, folks. All right, I'm just going to take a leap here that the vice president, uh, Joe Biden, the former vice president, was not a fan of the tax cuts. He leads the presidential field right now, and he's making it and its apparent failure, in his eyes, a signature issue. Among many, recent polls showing that he leads the crowded 2020 field uh, by quite a bit right now. That could change, but for now, is he the one the administration should be worried about, RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel? We did call, <clears throat> excuse me, call her Democratic counterpart, Tom Perez. Uh, he was unavailable. All right, uh, Ronna, very good to have you. Uh, you know, it's interesting because the fact is, and I just deal in facts here, most Americans did, in fact, get a tax cut. What is interesting about it, though, is most Americans don't feel they did. And that's what's kind of wacky, right? I, I don't know whether it's a case of people who don't see their checks because they're automatically deposited or they just wrote it off as not as big as they wanted, even though they got a cut. Does it worry you that a signature issue uh, could turn on Republicans? Well, you also have other indicators where most Americans feel that the country's uh, doing well economically, consumer confidence is up. So people overall recognize that our economy is booming. We just had the 3.2 percent GDP. We know wages are up. We know jobs are coming back. So all of the, those things together show the American people that President Trump's policies have worked. Deregulation, better trade deals, and cutting taxes have created a, a much better economy. And we get to contrast that with the Biden-Obama economy, where wages, wages were stagnant, where our GDP was minuscule, and jobs were fleeing our country. So it's, it's a pretty clear uh, way to balance what the Trump administration has done versus the Obama-Biden administration. And clearly, the Trump administration is working for the American people. Well, it's not as if the other guys weren't, right? I mean, and, and I think you will have to accept the fact that, you know, Barack Obama inherited an economy in a free fall. I'm not taking sides here, but Yeah, but it was the slowest it, recovery, slowest recovery from a recession in history. But it was and also the worst post-war recession we had. So I guess what I'm saying is when the president keeps taking a bow for the depression and the mess he inherited, do you think the hyperbole is, is a bit much there, a, a, a bit nervy? No, I think the president has every right to take uh, credit for what's happened. And it's come through policies, deregulating industry so that people can get more income to start small businesses, uh, cutting the corporate tax rate so companies can invest more and create more jobs. I mean, these are things that are directly because of policies enacted by President Trump. Obama did the opposite. They increased regulation. They increased taxes. That's why our economy did not grow as quickly after that recession. Well, so you're quite right, it's Robert, very clear. To talk about you know the fact that that wage growth has been picking up. It's now in the latest period running at about a 3.3 percent clip. Very very good. That's a volatile number. It was averaging about 2.8 percent, 2.9 percent under the eight years of Barack Obama when all was said and done. But do you think that it hurts his message? when he, he, he talks about the Federal Reserve holding him back or blames someone else for holding him back uh, and blames other people for other things that aren't going right, that, that, that for some reason the, number, the numbers and the economy and the markets who are quite right speak for themselves. Why can't he leave it at that without pointing a finger that I did better than this guy, this guy was a disaster, or the Federal Reserve stopped me and I could have done a lot better without them? It just gets kind of like a pile, doesn't it? What? Listen, Donald Trump was a businessman who ran for office because he said Washington can't get it, done, get it done. The bureaucracy and the slow nature of Washington is preventing our economy from growing. And he came in with very succinct goals, cut taxes, cut regulation, and make better trade deals. And we have seen as a result our economy pick up steam. I think he does deserve to take credit, and I think he's somebody who speaks his mind. But can That's why he was elected. Credit? Can they both take credit? A 10-year-plus long bull market, I agree with you. A lot of his policies have done just the trick, as you said. But why can't uh, this 10-year-plus bull market be both on the president's doorstep and his president's, uh, his prior well, president's Why can't doorstep? anybody from the Obama administration or Joe Biden or any Democrat say, you know what, President Trump was correct? He has kick-started this economy. You, you know what they're proposing? They're saying, let's take government, take, gov take over our health care. Let's have government take over our schools. I mean, it's more of a government takeover and a lot of policies that will slow and stagnate this economy. Do Republicans have a health care plan yet? 
Republicans are putting forward a health care plan. The president's talked about this. When but is that I will going say to, this. When is that going to happen? I'm I not a policymaker, but I will say this. We want to make sure that the doctor-patient relationship is restored. We do not want bureaucrats in Washington making medical decisions no, for Ron, families across this country. Those are meritorious goals, but if you're going to criticize your predecessor and say that his plan sucked or whatever he's saying, and well, you don't a have a plan, and you don't have a plan to substitute, but you don't have a plan to substitute it, and you're Graham only Cassidy. slapping we in we did. Around. No, let me let, let's go back. We had Graham Cassidy. Democrats didn't vote for it. Where you block grant the money back to the states, you have the states craft plans specific to their uninsured. It re restores the doctor-patient re relationship, and it's much better uh, for the uh, health care system and provides better care for the patient. Absolutely, we put a plan forward. Democrats at every step have rejected Republicans' plans. So, so, you so can't when put the that president was saying that we're going to have a health care plan to put forward, Republicans are looking forward. To Republicans Republicans were surprised that he was talking that up at a time. That's an issue they could be very vulnerable on. Are you saying that we are going to have a health care plan out like really, really soon? Because you don't right I'm now. Not, I'm not crafting the plan, but I will say we're going to contrast with the Democrats what Medicare for all means, which sounds great, great, Medicare for all, what does it mean? A total government takeover. It means bureaucrats in Washington are going to be making your Medicare decisions and the, the costs will be astronomical and it will destroy the absolute, uh, the underlying health care in this country. All right. So, Finally, yes, we're going to contrast that. question then on deficits. The president keeps mentioning them and that, you know, President Obama kept building up debt and all the like. He is running it up at a faster pace. I'm not saying he exclusively, obviously, but uh, it does he feel bad about that or that he's not been able, uh, and that is Republicans, when they had the run of the table, have not been able to deal with that because Republicans are attacking Democrats or being spendthrifts when, in fact, at the rate we're going, this president's going to top that. Well, let's remember the Democrats controlled the House and we never had a full majority in the Senate on 60 votes to pass budgets. So we had to work with Democrats, and that's the way that this government has functioned. But absolutely, the president is fiscally conscious, and he's recognized that we need to grow this economy if he we're going to pay off our debt. He was furious at a budget that the House foisted on him that had, was over a trillion dollars, and that would l later contribute to trillion dollar deficits, but he signed off on it, right? Because the president recognizes we have to pay for our defense, and we have other things we have to, to get done. And the only way he can do that is with Democrat votes. So I think Democrats need to be more fiscally responsible as well. And what about Republicans? I think we all need to recognize that we have a deficit and a debt problem. But as long I as we're working with Democrats. I haven't seen a one who does. I haven't seen a one who gives a rat's <laughs> you know what about it. Yes, we have, because we've grown this economy, Neil. And that's taking care of it, too. By growing the economy, by growing the GDP, we're, uh, we are dealing with deficit and debt problems. All right, because I just see trillion dollar deficits for years to come. But maybe you're looking at different numbers, right? Okay. Rhonda, thank you very, very much.